The next milestone for Starship S25 is underway. On January 17th of 2023, SpaceX lifted Ship 25 onto Starbase's only Starship static fire test stand. After nearly five months, yesterday around noon, local sheriffs closed the road to Starbase's orbital launch site and SpaceX cleared the pad of all personnel, freeing up S25 for the next stage of testing. The upcoming test is set to take place on June 30th and will mark the final step before Ship 25's orbital launch debut with Booster 9. Previous static fire tests were a spectacular sight, with flames and smoke erupting from the base of the shiny stainless steel rocket. Even then, the breath of life that erupted throughout the tank farm in no way pales in comparison. It was around 3 p.m. CDT when the cryogenic fluid loading began. Liquid nitrogen, or a mix of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen, filled the main tanks of Starship 25 in about an hour. Then the team waited for the fluids to warm up naturally, turning some of them into gas and increasing the pressure inside the tanks. As the pressure rose, chunks and sheets of frost and ice fell off the steel surface of the ship. That was the only sign of stress, besides the occasional venting. We were all hoping that Ship 25 would move on to engine testing after that, but something went wrong and the test was aborted. It was disappointing, but not the end of the world. They could try again today, and maybe even succeed this time. In fact, the Starship on the stand uses liquid oxygen as an oxidizer to burn its fuel. Most of the venting you see is gaseous oxygen that escapes from the liquid oxygen tank. The fuel for the Starship is liquefied natural gas or methane. This is one of two rocket fuels that at atmospheric pressures and temperatures are in their gas form. The other is liquid hydrogen, as was used on the Space Shuttle, Delta Heavy, Ariane 5, and in some upper stages of the Atlas, among others. All of these liquefied gases were vented remotely from the launch sites because of the danger of them combining combining in the air to possibly explode. For most of the liquefied gas fuels used, this remote venting is burned off with a flame generator, like the methane gas flares seen at oil refineries and other petroleum processing facilities. For SpaceX, this is required by the government as pollution mitigation because methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. But SpaceX goes further than the other rockets I mentioned and now pipes the gaseous methane back to the tank farm where they recover it and reliquify it for reuse. This then means that only a few seconds worth of gaseous methane gets vented between the release of the fueling and oxidizer connections just before the launch and the actual launch with all engines burning. As far as I know, they are the only gaseous fuel rocket makers doing this type of recovery. To ensure accuracy, it's important to note that the information provided might be subject to updates or changes. If you possess any up-to-date details regarding this topic, kindly share them with us in the comment section down below. Together, we can keep everyone informed and ensure the exchange of the most current and reliable information. But let's backpedal up a bit. The second orbital flight of Starship, the colossal rocket from SpaceX, might take place Place before the end of the summer. Elon Musk this week revealed that the company is shooting for another liftoff six to eight weeks from now. This is not an impossible goal considering that Starship has started testing Ship 25. The launch pad is also much better than before. A key hurdle for SpaceX when planning for the next Starship test is securing approval from the FAA. The firm's launch license that allowed it to proceed with the April test had limited it to only one launch, with any further tests subject to the FAA's approval. The agency is responsible for ensuring ensuring the rocket is suitable for a test flight and determining whether the launch site is safe, so only time will tell. However, if Booster 9 and Ship 25 perform as expected and there are no issues with the launch pad, it will make way for SpaceX to perform test flights at an increased cadence. SpaceX certainly does not have a hardware problem as they have vehicles in various stages of completion from Ship 25 to 29, either complete or very nearly, and up to Ship 35 undergoing stacking operations. On the booster side, Booster 9 is completed with two cryo tests done, and Booster 10 through 12 basically just needs Raptor engine installation. Boosters 13 through 16 are currently in their early phases of construction. During the upcoming second launch attempt to reach orbit, SpaceX will try to launch a fully integrated launch vehicle into an altitude of at least 100 kilometers, which is where the edge of outer space begins, otherwise known as the Kármán line. If Starship reaches orbital velocity, it would circle the planet and complete the flight test with a soft landing in the ocean along the coast of Hawaii. 
Meanwhile, one of the latest discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope is how the early universe became transparent. Galaxies played a key role in this process, as we will explain in this segment of today's news. In the beginning, the universe was a dark and enigmatic place. No light could penetrate the thick fog of gas that filled the space between stars and galaxies. This changed when the first galaxies formed and ionized the gas around them, making it transparent. This is what we learned from the observations of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which looked back in time at galaxies that existed 900 million years after the Big Bang. Using observations from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, an international team of astronomers led by Simon Lilly of ETH Zurich in Switzerland has an answer. The team looked back in time at galaxies from the end of the era of reionization, a dramatic period in the universe's history in which gas was heated, cooled, and then reionized, or given an electrical charge once again. Looking at those early galaxies, which existed just 900 million years after the Big Bang, the team saw that most of the gas in the universe was somewhere between opaque and transparent. But directly around the galaxies, everything was clear. With Webb's data, we are seeing galaxies reionize the gas around them. Daichi Kashino of Japan's Nagoya University, lead author of a new paper sharing the team's results, said in a statement, Let me tell you a story about the early universe. Long ago, when the first galaxies were forming, they were surrounded by invisible balloons of gas. These balloons were filled with hydrogen atoms that blocked the light from the stars. But as more and more stars were born, they produced powerful energy that broke apart the hydrogen atoms and made the gas transparent. This this process is called reionization. The balloons of transparent gas grew bigger and bigger as the galaxies grew and they started to touch each other and merge. Eventually, they filled up the whole universe with clear gas that let the light shine through. How do we know this happened? Well, we have a special tool called a quasar. A quasar is a very bright object that lives in the center of some galaxies. It is powered by a huge black hole that eats up gas and dust and spits out a lot of light and radio waves. Quasars are so bright that we can see them from very far away, even when the universe was young. Sometimes when we look at a quasar, we can see how its light travels through the gas in the universe. We can tell if the gas is opaque or transparent by looking at the colors of the light. If some colors are missing, it means that the gas absorbed them. However, if all the colors are there, it means that the gas let them pass. One day, some astronomers used a big telescope called Webb to look at a quasar that was very far away. They wanted to see what the gas around it was like. They were amazed to find that some parts of the gas were opaque and some parts were transparent. This meant that they were seeing a moment in time when reionization was happening. They were seeing how the balloons of transparent gas were merging and making the universe clear. They were seeing how the stars changed the history of the universe. By illuminating gas along our line of sight, the quasar gives us extensive information about the composition and state of the gas. Anna Christina Eilers of MIT, the lead author of another one of the team's newly released papers, said in the same statement. As they gazed at the ancient galaxies that emerged only 900 million years after the cosmic dawn, the team was struck by a curious contrast. The gas that filled the vast space between the galaxies was mostly semi-transparent, allowing some light to pass through. But the gas that surrounded the galaxies themselves were completely transparent, as if it had been cleared away by some powerful force. What could have caused this difference? The team decided to investigate further by studying five other regions of the sky, each with a bright quasar at its center. By comparing the light from these quasars with the light from the galaxies, they hoped to unravel the mystery of how the early universe became transparent. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing achievements of SpaceX and its visionary founder, Elon Musk, as well as the newest discoveries by the JWST. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.